Before we start, just thought I'd mention this is the first video I've ever tried to make, be it technology or not. So things are going to be out of focus, there's going to be things that I could have done better, but learning curve, I guess. Hello, and welcome to my first unboxing video. Today we're going to have a look at the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Water Force Edition. So let's get this unboxed. It's a phone with the logo printed on it or something. Warranty stuff. Extreme care for your warranty stuff. Um, yeah. Warranty commitment. And here we have stuff out the way. Here we have the card itself. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Okay. Okay. So in the rest of the box we have a sweatband with the Gigabyte Extreme logo. We have a little case badge in here. Little metal case badge, it's pretty cool. And somewhere else in the box, we also have what is it? Two six pins to an eight pin power plug. So let's put this down on the floor, down there. Okay, let's And here we have it. That crossbar that you see near the badge, that's got an RGB light. We have the Gigabyte Extreme logo with the other graphic. That also lights up in full RGB with a whole bunch of modes, which I'll get to at some point. Got two 8 pin power adapt connectors. On the back here, we have two HDMI ports for when you want to get. when you have a bay device that can connect from the back of the card there up into like your five and a quarter bay or something. We have. A nice looking back plate that's upside down with the nice ac orange accents and on the front of the card for the IO we have DVI we've got three display ports and a HDMI which on this one Gigabyte has actually changed it around so you've actually got the three display ports and then you've got the HDMI there instead of two HDMI, two display ports, and then a HDMI, and then another DP, which was weird. Okay, so the tubing here is FEP, and it's, but it's braided, so it looks a lot better than the water force of the previous edition. And the, the fan is hard, hard wired into the card itself and goes up into an aluminium radiator with a 120mm fan. This fan is software controlled so you don't have to mess around with that. On the radiator itself something's pretty cool. They actually in include the screws to go onto the case themselves so that you don't have to try and mess around trying to find out what screw size they are, what length they are, 
and if you wanted to you could undo the fan from this side and it's got long screws On the side here, it's if you wanted to change it, it's got the spinning and the airflow rate. Okay, well, let's get this plugged in. So I've got the card half installed now. One thing I forgot to mention is up in the power plugs, not sure if you can see, but there's two little LEDs up the back here. When they are lit up, that means that they're unplugged. When they're flashing, it means that the power that they are receiving is unclean or unsuitable. And when they're off, it means that everything's all sweet. So in the back here, these the um, HDMIs, those ones, I can't put them on the front bays if I wanted to anyways because I have a fan controller there and I also have a Blu-ray drive there and I don't have any other five and a quarter bays. So if I wanted to I guess I could get some HDMI extensions, put them in there and just stick them out one of the PCI slots, that's a real janky solution but could do that. Or you could find one of these on eBay. Also, when the HDMI in the back here is is actually activated, certain plugs on the I/O will be disabled, and this picture is a uh, how it works. of what plugs will and will not work in what configuration and whatnot. You can't have every plug going at once at one stage it seems, but I could be wrong. So here it is installed. I've got the radiator up there at the back and somebody asked how long this tubing is. It is 370 millimeters long. So let's go through some lighting modes since we're here. So we have breathing which it's on at the moment. You can set a particular speed of it breathing and you can choose the color. Like at the moment it's on orange, you can choose blue, you can choose any color by its red, green and blue values. You can choose a color by its hexadecimal code, I think it's called, or you can click the rainbow box and it will cycle through random. You can choose the brightness, the speed of breathing, you can go to flashing, you can obviously change the brightness and speed of that, you can go to dual flashing, so it'll flash to of one color and then it'll go to the next. You can go to variable brightness, variation, oh, you, with the variable, bri variable brightness setting, you can go style based, you can go based on GPU temperature, based on utilization, based on the GPU clock, you can go GPU voltage, or GPU fan speed. That and that's and it can also have a brightness adjust on that too. You can also go audio flashing. Wait, I think I'll just have it on breathing with the rainbow thing. Also, let's test out some fan speeds. So at the moment, it's on automatic. We're going to go manual setting. We're going to go. 30, apply, I could barely hear the difference in that, go 
50. Okay, I noticed that difference. 70. And now eighty Let's go to one hundred. Yeah, so one hundred's quite loud. So in the Guru settings, let's see if I can focus, how does this focus? Okay, so you have a GPU monitor on the side here if you want it. You can set a custom fan curve. You can set turbo mode, automatic mode, silent mode, advanced mode, which is what I was doing for the manual settings. Over there you change the LED, it's got, you can choose between the card or the other card or a GPU bridge for its LED settings. Here's where you would be changing everything with the LED, you can choose all the effects. And down here is like the RGB. Uh, G, B values as well as hexadecimal color code. You can go to the advanced overclocking section over here which um, you've, it's got all the different easy settings or the preset clock settings or you can go to advanced mode where you can then set like the GPU boost 3.0 settings whether it be a linear curve or you can choose your custom curve or any of that or you can go ma by clicking manual settings you can set the custom curve uh, if you go oh, and you can set profiles too in the, ad in the normal OC mode up there this is where you can set your GPU clock, your voltage, your power limit, um, temperature limit, memory clock, and all stuff like that. So for my testing of benchmarks, I'm going to be using the easy settings on OC mode. You can also hit the advanced setting and then go basic settings plus uh, an offset.